Thursday, October 5th, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is a Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change, coming to you from a gray, overcast gem city. And, of course, if it's Thursday, that means 24-7 Sports Director of Recruiting Steve Wolfong is here. Steve, I assume Indianapolis is the same. Good morning, Daniel. The rain is beating down on the windows. It's hard to concentrate. Yeah, we're not that bright here, so a walking and chewing gum can push us, but we will get it done. The rain has not hit here yet, but it's obviously coming east, so we'll enjoy that. But we will really enjoy a recruiting roundup here with Steve as we kind of try and touch all the current bases. Then at the end, Steve and I are going to have an embattled argument over movies, but I digress. I want to go through a list of dudes here. We're going to go through Anthony Cook, Emery Jones, Tommy Togai, and Rashid Walker, kind of a current events kind of day. First dude, Anthony Cook, went to Texas this past weekend, has an official scheduled for LSU October 14th, but the Texas visit obviously made a huge impression on him. Anyone who's followed the coverage of it saw that he rated it at 10, told uh, Texas 247 rep E.J. Holland that Ohio State and Texas are now even, so here's the question. Was it uh, post-visit hangover love, or was there an actual shift here that you think will make you eventually want to flip your crystal ball, which well, is currently on Ohio Texas, State? Sure. I think Texas needed to pull a rabbit out of their hat to make a, a maneuver with Anthony Cook, and that's what they did. They played on Thursday night. I was actually at their game in Ames against Iowa State, and I've never seen a, a football program host an official visitor uh the day after a Thursday game, I thought that was pretty unique. And, and obviously they got Anthony on campus after a win, and then they're feeling good about the program. And, and it was just him on campus, and it was an intimate weekend where they were able to show what a priority he is. Texas has four of the top five players in Texas committed right now. Anthony Cook is the only one that's not in the fold, so he's getting the peer pressure as well to join. I'm going to wait and see where this visit sits when the dust settles texas it's early in the year and uh it could be a, it could get tough sledding for them on the field here moving forward their offensive line is banged up it's not playing well as it is and uh texas has got a tough slate tough road ahead of them and and could struggle to get some wins and, and uh lsu uh, they've all, that was my original crystal ball for Anthony. He's going there in, in October. I just, yeah, I know he'll have a good time and, and he's got a good relationship with that staff, but I'm still in the seeing what, see what happens phase. Ohio State, nothing's changed there. They're a title, they're going to be a title contender every year. Anthony Cook plays college football, uh, going into each and every season and then with the NFL track record at the position and the relationships they have with Anthony. And his family and circle of trust, you know the Buckeyes are in it. Did this recruiter recruitment get a little tighter? It did for the time being, but we'll see where it stands in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that echoes what I've been told by someone else who I trust in that they tend to favor the hangover theory more than the actual shift in recruiting, but we will stay tuned. Obviously, Anthony Cook is a recruit that Ohio State really wants in the fold, arguably the top corner in the country, and he's been in the mix here for – it was like about 18 months. Buckeyes Number, love him and, and Tyson Campbell. They'd love to have Tyson Campbell as well. Well, let's hit that real quick then. We didn't we, we teased the people, but we didn't say Tyson Campbell. It doesn't look like there's much juice for him coming to Ohio State right now. Well, I think it's like an official visit, and the Buckeyes are recruiting him as hard as anyone on their board. And I don't think he's anywhere close to making a decision. Alabama, Georgia, Miami, among the other contenders. We'll keep an eye on Tyson Campbell. It sounds like that one's going to a hat dance. Emory Jones, I think I brought him up already. Being a quarterback, obviously going to be a source of much chatter. He increased the decibel level of said chatter with a visit to Alabama. Ohio State has a U visit. We look around mentality, and they have done that according to some sources. But what's your vibe on Jones? Do you think he saw enough from – Alabama to flip 
Does Alabama really want him? What's the deal there? Well, the second question, I don't know. I mean, Alabama had three quarterbacks on campus over the weekend. You know they want Justin Fields, the number one ranked quarterback in the country, number one ranked player in the country on 24-7 sports. They also had Jaron Williams from Georgia, a top 247 quarterback recruit that I like a lot. That's committed to Kentucky. And then they had Jones, of course. There are some reports that, yeah, there are some reports that Ohio State has contacted him. Jaron? Mm-hmm. Well, he can play. There's, there's no question. So, well, that just. How would you compare him to Jones for those who don't know about him? Well, I think he's a more polished passer that if you, you stack the numbers, I mean, Jaron Williams threw 26 touchdowns and only two picks as a junior. He's having a terrific senior season. He's a guy that was highly recruited, but everyone that's kind of pushed for Justin Fields, Jaron went where he was wanted in, in Kentucky. So I, I'm a big Jaron Williams guy. I, I think he's one of the better quarterbacks in this class. So anyone that gets him would be, will be lucky to have him. And then Emory Jones, He's tremendously talented. I don't know if Alabama's pushing there right now. Uh, so, obviously, I've had him on campus a couple times, and so he's definitely legitimately interested in Alabama. And from there, I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I think quarterback in general for Ohio State is going to get a lot more interesting in the next few months, just my opinion. Very stacked depth chart, a lot of guys who want to play, a lot of swag, and a lot of guys in the pipeline, so something's got to give. But uh, we'll handle that as the rain subsides. Next interesting one, Tommy Toga, defensive tackle that you crystal almost exactly a month ago, which is obviously a, a good sign. One of the schools that was always thought about uh, in the West Coast type bigger dudes, Washington, the 24-7 sports guru there, Ruth Robbins, just crystal balled Tommy to Ohio State. Do you know why that is? Is that just a vibe on their part, or do you, has something happened that, Got everyone thinking so guys had it east. I'm not sure what Ruth's reasoning was. All I know is that when I put in my crystal ball for Ohio State, I thought the Buckeyes were the current leader, and then I, and I was going into his visit, and there was some talk that potentially they could close him. Um, I still think Ohio State leads, but Ohio State sources have told me that they'll have to battle Washington and USC to the end. So Tommy going to Washington this weekend, that's certainly a visit to keep an eye on, and Washington's playing well. Uh, they're in the top ten, and they're a playoff contender for a second straight year. Yeah, but that's bizarre for the for the for the if he's visiting Washington this weekend for the for the two four seven rep to crystal ball him to Ohio State before he even gets there. That's something to watch. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I got to look into that one. All right, here's one we got to look into. It looks to me like on your crystal ball you went from nothing to foggy on Rashid Walker, the offensive lineman. Uh, Is that accurate? Right. Well, I went from Penn State to Foggy for top Okay, my bad. Go ahead. Tackle. Rasheed Walker, and I've been writing for weeks that I think that he could ultimately end up at Ohio State. I haven't crystal balled him, but others have because of the, those reports. And uh, I think that once Ohio State gets him to campus, it's going to be a game changer. He's also extremely high on Maryland. was at Virginia Tech this past weekend. He does love Penn State, but as you know, we've talked about in numerous places on the 24-7 Sports Network, Penn State's class getting full. So I, I think in, in Ohio State, Rasheed Walker is a priority target for them. They're recruiting him hard. They've had a lot of success in the DMV area. Uh, Isaiah Prince, one of the guys that's come out of there that's, you know, obviously starting on the offensive line. So <clears throat> I, I think ultimately I like Ohio State's chances for Rasheed. I'm just waiting for him to get back to campus. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It does seem like there's going to be some shuffling among a few commits between Ohio State and Penn State down the stretch. I shouldn't add to the I'm drama of the game in Columbus. I know it's going to be incredible. Drama in Columbus at all? I know it's going to be great. It's it's building up for a a wonderful wonderful experience. And the last time I saw it, you, by the way, at a Penn State game in Columbus, it went very well. Yeah, the Buckeyes um, are still scoring, um, but the. <laughs> I, I know I was saying earlier in the year that that was a night game, and I, I can't believe it's not a night game, but I'm just excited it's a 3.30 game. I, I like 3.30 games. I'm getting old. It I don't like them at 11.30, game. 11.45. I know, but it may be a 3.30 game. The Ohio State faith will be fully lubricated by 3.30. They won't need to – for a game like that, they won't need the extra few hours. It's probably saving some people's liver to get the game started at a, an earlier time. 
All right, here we're going to finish with this. I'm going to date myself here. Steve just wrote a story on Max Dugan. Does anyone know who that is? Quarterback from Iowa. If you thought, when you heard the name Max Dugan, if you thought Jason Robards, you're a smart man, Steve didn't even know that there's a movie called Max Dugan Returns. And here's the question. Should Steve be embarrassed about this, considering the fact the movie came out in 1983 and Steve was born in 1982? I wasn't doubting that it was a great movie in its time, or in its moment, but um, it didn't transcend the era. So for me to know of a movie before I was old enough to remember, it, it's not a it's not a Back to the Future. It's not a Goonies. It's not a Ghostbusters. It's not a Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It, it's it, it probably was a great movie with a great cast, but those are movies like my kid's gonna watch the Ghostbusters. I still have I have the Ghostbusters on DVD. My kid will probably see E. T. My kid will definitely see Back to the Future. Stand by me. Uh, it, it's 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 not in that realm. That doesn't mean it wasn't a great movie. It just wasn't. Well, it wasn't in that a great realm. movie, to be honest. But I will say this, Stand By Me, Keeper Sutherland, he's in Max Dugan Returns, Donald Sutherland, Jason Robards, and Matthew Broderick, also in the film, Google it, people. It's not about a quarterback. It's about a guy who comes back with a lot of money. Speaking of a lot of money, we appreciate Steve stopping by. Have a good one, Buckcutters. Appreciate it, guys.